The Outback conjures up some of the most iconic images of Australia. Outback Australia is the heart and soul of Central Australia. It's the arid desert region that takes in the Northern Territory, Queensland and Western Australia. Alice Springs at the centre of Australia is the only major settlement within 5.6 million kilometres. The outback covers more than 70% of the country. From space it is seen as a vast reddish landscape for thousands of kilometres. With desert-like landscapes, lush bushland and unique animals, it's no wonder that this area is thought of as the true Aussie experience. Tourists flock to Australia's Red Centre, the heart of the outback. The distances are vast, so most visitors will fly to Alice Springs or Ayers Rock Airport. Once here, you can hire a car or join a coach tour from either airport. Uluru Katajuta is 495 kilometres, or a good five hour drive by road from Alice Springs. Uluru is one of Australia's most recognisable landmarks and is often referred to as the heart of the Red Centre. Uluru is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and is thought to be the world's largest monolith a single rock that was formed 555 million years ago. Uluru changes colour throughout the day. At sunset, Uluru glows a fiery orange-red colour. There are five viewing areas built specifically for experiencing and photographing the landscape and changing colours. Pack a picnic and secure a spot early as these can become very busy just before sunset. Getting around Uluru Katajuta National Park is easy. All roads are sealed, so driving around the park in a normal two-wheel drive is fine. Parking anywhere in the park or at Ayers Rock Resort is free and abundant, but there is an entrance cost per person to the National Park. There are several walks around Uluru. The most popular is the Marla Walk. This is an easy two kilometre walk from the Marla Car Park, or alternatively, you can meet rangers at the Marla Car Park and enjoy a free informative guided walk. You will enter the cave where the Indigenous Australians camped, the kitchen cave, and see some examples of rock art. One of my favourite walks is around the base of Uluru. It's approximately 11 kilometre flat walk that takes in Uluru from all angles. Some caves at the base of the rock are sacred to several Aboriginal tribes and therefore entry is restricted. Allow two to three hours to complete this walk. Take plenty of snacks and drinking water as there's none available after you leave the car park. Alternatively, you can drive around Uluru and see all sides of the rock from a distance. Toilets and drinking water are available at Marla Car Park or you can drive back up the main road to the visitor centre where there's a cafe, more toilet facilities and a shaded picnic area. The visitor centre is located 15 minutes from the National Park entrance. Here you'll be able to gain an understanding of the spiritual significance of the Uluru Katajuta traditional owners. You will learn about their food, their fuel, weapons, art and their medicines. The visitor centre is open from 7am to 6pm every day. Katajuta means many heads. This area is often referred to as the Olgas after the tallest peak, Mount Olga. This spectacular landform is 50 kilometres or a 45 minute drive from Uluru. This is a sacred men's site under the traditional law, but everyone is welcome to come and enjoy the dome rock formations. There are many walks at Katajuta, with the most popular being the Valley of the Winds Loop and the Walper Gorge Walk. Walper Gorge Walk is shorter and easier than the Valley of the Winds. This walk is 2.6 kilometres return and will take approximately one hour. The Valley of the Winds walk is much more difficult. The full circuit is 7.4 kilometres and will take approximately four hours to complete. I did it with my seven-year-old son, so it is possible to take children. The walk is rocky, steep in sections and quite isolated. There is no toilet facilities or water on either walk. The last toilets and drinking water are at the Sunset Car Park. The best time to visit Katajuta is autumn, winter and spring. Temperatures in the summer months can be extreme, making it uncomfortable and sometimes dangerous. Like Uluru, Katajuta will put on a spectacular colour show at sunrise and sunset. Please check the park closing times as these vary from month to month. Kings Canyon is approximately 300 kilometres or a three hour drive northeast of Uluru Katajuta. A majestic destination featuring 150 metre high sandstone walls, palm filled crevices and views that stretch across the desert. The Marini Loop connects Uluru with Kings Canyon 
But be warned, this road is only suitable for four-wheel drives and has no fuel or facilities along the way. A permit is also required as the road crosses Aboriginal land. For those in a two-wheel drive, the main highway is fully sealed. Entry to Kings Canyon and the National Park is free. There are toilet facilities and drinking water located near the Kings Canyon car park. The resort offers a range of cafes and restaurants. The two most popular walks are the Kings Canyon Creek Walk and the Rim Walk. The Creek Walk takes you into the leafy Garden of Eden. This walk is suitable for families. The first 700 metres is accessible by wheelchair. The Rim Walk is a challenging but spectacular 6 km loop. After the initial steep climb, the walk offers a variety of landscapes, including the weathered domes of the Lost City and the lush Garden of Eden. You may recognise the Rim Walk as it features in the 1994 Australian road comedy film Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. The producers initially sought permission to film at Uluru, but this application was rejected because of sacred religious beliefs. A huge shout out to Ayers Rock and Kings Canyon Resort for hosting us during our time in the Australian Outback. Yeah.